What is up you guys and welcome back to the 98 English course. In today's recording we're going to be going over Unit 4, Science and Nature. Okay, so as always we start with the key vocabulary and then we move on to the listening. Here we go. Effect, Altitude, Autumn, Bear, Beautiful, Boring, Climate, Cloudy, cold, dangerous, difficult, dog, dry, effect, fast, foggy, fur, high, hot, humid, leg, lightning, lips, low, mild, modern, neck, nose, paw, protected, rain, region, season, skin, spring, storm, summer, sunny, temperature, tropical, valley, warm, weight, wet, winter. Okay, you guys, now let's move on to listening. So what do we have here? It looks like we're going to be talking about uh, climate and the weather and different seasons of the year. Okay, so here we can see we have a pretty nice photograph actually. And we have fallen leaves, right? Here we have the beautiful sea, obviously, and some mountains in the back. Here we can see some flowers, and here it looks like it's freezing cold. Okay, so here we have exercise A. Listen, which photographs can you see in, or can you see each item in? Let me actually open this for you guys. Okay, so how is this going to go? We're, the audio will give us items, so for example, uh, trees, leaves, the sea, sky, clouds, okay? And we're gonna have to mention how many of these items or in how many pictures can we see said items, okay? So here we go, have a listen. 42. Unit 4. Science and Nature. Lesson 1. Listening. Exercise A. Listen. Which photographs can you see each item in? Trees. Okay, so number one is trees. Where can we see trees, you guys? We can obviously see trees in number one, number two as well, number three in the background, and finally number four. Okay, so trees will be one, two, three, and four. Okay? Leaves. Leaves. Okay, so we can clearly see leaves in number one. Okay, number two as well. We can see the leaves here. And let's check number three. You guys can see the, the trees in the background and the leaves as well. However, number four has trees, but all these trees don't have any leaves because it's like freezing below a degree. It's minus something degrees out there, so no leaves. Okay, so for leaves, we'll have one two, and three, right? Let's keep going. Flowers. Flowers. Where can we see flowers? Not in number one. I don't see any flowers. Not in number two. A ton of flowers in number three, and no flowers at all in number four. So number three only. The sea. And the sea, we can obviously tell that the sea is only in number two, okay? So number two, we'll have to see. Sand. Sand. Again, I don't see any sand in number one, three, or four, so only number two with this beach here. The sky. The sky. Can't really seem to see the sky on number one. We can clearly see the sky in number two, and number three, and number four, okay? So we can see the sky here a little bit. We can see the full sky in number four and number two as well. So the sky will be two, three, and four. 
clouds. Clouds. Where can we see clouds? So I can't see clouds, or basically the sky. And number one, so we can see the clouds in number two. Here it is. Can't really see clouds on number three. And I'm guessing these are also clouds a little bit. So number two and four are clouds. Snow. Snow. We can obviously see the snow only in number four. As you can see, it's freezing. Rocks. Rocks. Hmm. I don't remember seeing any rocks. So, no rocks here at all, right? Only trees and a road. And here, no rocks at all. Only mountains. Okay. So, no rocks. So, no no rocks at all. Okay. People. People. Okay. We can only see people in photograph number three. All right, so that's it. Now let's move on. What do we have here? Exercise B. Listen to four descriptions by students. Let me actually open this up for you guys. Okay, which photograph is the speaker describing? Okay, so in this audio, we're gonna have four different speakers for every photograph. Obviously, it's gonna be scrambled, and we're gonna have to number which speaker is talking about which photograph. Okay. And then after that, we're gonna write the name for the season under each picture. Each picture. So, for example, what is the season here? What is the season here? And all of them. But for now, let's focus on the speakers and which one is talking about which photograph. Okay? Here we go. Take a listen. Forty-three. Exercise B. Listen to four descriptions by students. This photograph is from Russia. Um. Russia is in Europe and Asia. The photograph shows the city of Saint Petersburg in winter. There's a lot of snow, and the temperature is below freezing. In Europe, winter is December to February, but it can be much longer in Saint Petersburg. Okay, so first speaker is obviously talking about Russia here because she's talking about how freezing it was and how under the it was like minus minus two Celsius or things like that. So basically freezing. So number one will be photograph number four. Okay, here we go. This photo's from Barbados in the West Indies. As you can see, it's a beautiful day in summer. It's hot,、um, and the sea is calm. There are only a few clouds in the sky. This photograph. Okay, so let me pause that before we move on. So here we have number two, you guys. We can see the clouds, we can see the sea, and we can see that it looks hot and basically a good summer day. So obviously that will be speaker number two. So speaker number two. For photograph number two, let's keep going. Graph was taken in Holland. Holland is a small country in Europe. It's famous for its flowers. In the photograph, it's spring, and we can see thousands of tulips, um, red and yellow. In the northern hemisphere, spring starts in March and ends in May. This is a okay. Before we move on, here we can see the flowers, like she was talking about, and that looks like you know the spring season right here. This is in Holland, so speaker number three will be with photograph number three as well. Photograph of Vermont.、Um, Vermont is in the east of the United States. People say it's the most beautiful place in the world in autumn. This photograph shows the lovely autumn colors in a forest. In Canada and the USA, people say fall and not autumn. Okay, so obviously he's talking about number one. You guys can see fall, or as he said, autumn as well. This is the fourth and final season, okay, of the year. So number four, and this is the photograph. So speaker number four will be with number one. Okay, you guys. Pretty simple stuff. Now let's move on to two. 
write the name for the season under each picture. So obviously, number one, you guys know, a side effect when it's fall or uh, autumn, the season, is that leaves tend to turn brown and fall off trees, right? And weather-wise, it's usually dry and windy, okay? So that is aut autumn. So we'll write it like so, autumn. Okay, and obviously there is a silent N in the end, you, you guys, okay? Then we have number two. What is this, you guys? You guys should be able to know this. This is obviously summer. Summer is usually hot, very hot, depending on where you live, okay? And it's usually a lot of people's favorites because it's favorite season because some people really do, or not some people, a lot of people enjoy going out to the sea and to the beach and having fun and finally going outside and Okay, things of that nature. Now, let's move on to number three. And this, I think, is the most ideal season for most people as well. Like, summer's fun and all, but sometimes, you know, people don't want to spend their whole lives in summer. So this is the season that people, you know, kind of focus on what they want to do in, right? So we have, this is called spring, you guys, right? And spring is kind of a mix between slight wind and not too hot, not too cold kind of weather, if you know if that makes sense. It's basically ideal, you know, so you don't feel the need like you don't feel like you're gonna die because of how hot it is outside, like in summer, or it's not too windy or dry that you feel like you don't really want to go outside like in autumn, okay? And finally, let's go to number four and our final season we have winter, you guys. In winter, everybody knows what winter is. It is the hands down coldest season, right? At night, it might not necessarily be windy, but it can be really cold depending on where you live. And this is where a lot of people don't really like to go outside very much, myself included. Obviously, depending on where you live, sometimes winter is just, you know, slight cold, while in other places, winter can be devastating as seen in the picture here. Like, I'm talking snow you know, minus two degrees outside and just basically you don't want to be outside. So yeah, we have winter, summer, spring, and autumn. Okay, now let's move on. What do we have here? Here we have listen to a short talk about seasons. Okay, so we're going to be listening to a short talk about seasons and we're going to complete the table and guess the spelling of each place name. Okay, so let's have a listen here. Okay, so he's going to be telling us the place, the number of seasons, and other information related. Here, have a listen. 44. Exercise C. Listen to a short talk about seasons. Complete the table. Guess the spelling of each place name. Okay, so most parts of the world have four seasons. For example, Islamabad, which is the capital of Pakistan, has a cold season, a hot season, a wet season, and lastly, a cool season. The cold season is from December um, to the end of March. And uh, the hot season is from the beginning of April to June. Yes, June. Now... The wet season is from July to September. And so finally, the cool season starts in October and ends in November. So that was Pakistan. However, some parts of the world only have two seasons. Okay, I'm going to pause it right here. I might actually rewind a little bit when we continue again. So firstly, she was talking about Pakistan and how Islamabad by the way, the capital of Pakistan has four seasons. So number of seasons for place is Islamabad, Pakistan. Okay, Pakistan. Let me write that. And other information, she said that from December to the end of March is the cold season, right? And from April to June is the hot season. And after that, from July to September is quote-unquote, the wet season, right? And finally, from October to November is the cool season, and then the cycle goes on and on again, 
Okay, now let's rewind and continue. However, some parts of the world only have two seasons. For example, Baga, which is in the north of Nigeria, in Africa, has a dry season and a wet season. Um, the dry season is from October to April, and the wet season is from May to September. Baga is in the northern hemisphere, but some places in the southern hemisphere also have. T okay, so I'm gonna pause it right here. So talking about Baga in Nigeria, it's in northern Nigeria, okay, and it has two seasons, right? Like she said, so it has two seasons okay and from October to April we have a season called the dry season right okay so what dry means is basically uh, you know when the weather is really hot in the morning but really cold at night so it can really confuse our bodies biologically okay that's the dry season and from March to September we have the wet season right so that's it now let's move on two seasons. For example, Nazca in Peru, which is in South America, has a summer season and a winter season. The summer season is from December to March because Peru is in the southern hemisphere and the winter season is from April to November. Now let's look at the seasons. In okay, now that that is over, she talked a little bit about Nazca, Peru, and that how it's in South America, right? And it has also two seasons, right? So only two seasons. We have summer from December to March, summer. And from April to November, we have winter, okay? So this was the table. Now let's move on. What else do we have? Okay, you guys, take a quick look at this map right here. We're going to be talking about it a little bit more, but for now, take a quick look. Yeah, just It's basically a world map with different lines, right, and different places for different climate changes, right? So obviously you can tell that things far, very far away are probably the coldest and how things that are red are probably the hottest or things that are... You know, it's extreme summers, basically, and things, you know, that are yellow or orange can be, you know, a little bit more tolerable, okay? Now, let's go and look at exercise D. Look at the place, uh, place names in the box, okay? Let me actually open this here. Okay, exercise D, we have, look at the place names in the box, is each place a continent, a country, a region, okay? So you guys know continents and countries. So continents are big, big, big areas that can have multiple countries, right? And then we have countries that can have obviously multiple cities and regions is kind of, kind of similar to a continent, but much smaller, right? And can have also, you know, some countries in it max, okay? So nowhere near as big as a continent. Right, and a continent doesn't necessarily need to have multiple countries. It can be its own country, okay? But it can be just a big, big land or space. So we have Africa. What is Africa, you guys? Obviously, Africa is a continent, right? Continent. Africa is really big, right? And there are a lot of places in Africa. And then we have Antarctica. Hmm, Antarctica is also a continent, believe it or not. However, it's really cold. Like, it's far away, but it's really cold. And then we have Asia. Asia is also a continent, right? A little bit farther away from, uh, obviously, North America and such, but also a continent. Continent. Australia is obviously a big country, okay? So it's a country, but it's a really big country. So, country. And then we have China. China is also a country, you guys, with actually, I think, the biggest population in the world. So China is a country. Australia is a country. Then we have Europe. What is Europe, you guys? Europe is a continent, okay? So continent. 
Europe is a continent. And then we have the Middle East, where we're from. So the Middle East is actually a region, right? So a Middle East is a region, right? And then we have Greenland. What is Greenland exactly? It's also a region, believe it or not, okay? So the Middle East is a region, and Greenland is a region as well. And then we have India. What is India, you guys? India is a country, right? Country. India is a country. And then we have North America. North America is a continent, okay? Continent. Okay? And then we have Oceania. Oceania is actually a continent as well. So continent, right? And then we have Russia. Russia, although also a big, a big country, is also a country. Okay? So it's not a continent, it's a country. And then we have South America. South America is obviously a continent. Continent. And finally, we have the United States of America. And that is a country. Okay? Country. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. Now, let's move on. Okay, find all the places on the map. Okay, so this is going to turn into geography here. So here we have, uh, we're going to take it step by step. So starting from this side right here, we have, this is obviously North America. Then right under it, we have the United States of America. And down here, we have South America. Okay, and if you actually look here now, Moving a little bit further, we have Europe. So this is Europe right here. And then we have Africa down here. And here we have the Middle East. Okay, you guys should be able to see that. Here we have the Middle East. And here we have Russia. Okay, so this is Russia right here. And here we have Asia. Okay, this is Asia. And what else do we have? Uh, we have China. Oh, yeah, we have China here and Oceania down here and all the way down here we have this big chunk part right here is Australia okay and now this little bit over here is India okay it's actually a lot bigger but you guys get the idea this is India okay I think that was all of them now oh actually Greenland we forgot about Greenland where is Greenland Greenland is right here I told you guys it was far away so Greenland Okay, now let's move on. What do we have? Here we have exercise E. Listen to the introduction to a lecture about climate. And then we have these phrases in a box to make a definition of a climate. Okay, give me a second here. Let it open up. Okay, here we have, we're going to have a listen to an introduction uh, of a lecture about climate. Okay, so the main focus will be about climate. And then we're going to be reordering this phrase or these phrases right here to make up the definition of what climate means. Okay, let's have a listen. 45. Exercise E. Listen to the introduction to a lecture about climate. Now, today, we're going to talk about climate around the world. So, world climate. Firstly, I'll give you uh, um, a definition of climate. Then I'm going to look at the main types of climate. OK, so first, what is climate? We all know the word weather. Rain and wind and sun. Is climate the same as weather? No, it isn't. Weather is part of climate, but they are not the same. Climate is connected with a particular region. It is the normal weather in a particular region. But it is more than that. Most regions in the world have seasons. Two, three or four different times of the year. So, we must look at the normal weather in each season – summer, winter, spring and autumn. And not just one year. We need data from many years. 
We must look for patterns over many years. Okay, so based on what we just heard in the audio, the definition of climate will be, we'll probably say it is the normal pattern, right? So, oh, right here. I don't know why it's not working. Okay, it is the normal pattern of weather, obviously because he dif he made a differentiation between weather and climate and how they are not the same weather is part of the climate, right? So it is the normal pattern of weather in a region over a long period of time, right? So in order to have accurate measurements of climate, I just to let you guys know you're probably never 100% accurate when it comes to climate okay but we as humans you know try our best to be as accurate accurate as we can be right so it is the normal pattern of weather the consistency of weather in a particular region over a long period of time obviously doing research and such okay so basically What's key here is the word consistency, okay? The consistency of a weather or the changes to a weather in a region over a long period of time. So the definition of climate, again, one more time, it is the normal pattern of weather in a region over a long period of time. Okay, you guys? Simple stuff. Let's move on, okay? What do we have here? Here we have exercise F. Listen to the main part of the lecture. Okay, so now we're going to be listening to the main part of the lecture. Look at the key above. All right, let me actually open this here. Okay. So we're going to be listening to this, you guys, right? And complete the information about each climate type. And actually, let me close this for a second. I'll get right back into it. You guys see these different uh, colors? These are obviously colors, like I said, indicating, you know, if it's cold, hot, you know, sustainable, a little bit extra cold, a little bit hot, you know what I mean? So we're going to be going over that in a second. Let's have a listen to exercise F first. 46. Exercise F. Listen to the main part of the lecture. Look at the key above. Right. That's our definition. Now, let's look at the main climate types. As I said, there are six main types. Let's start with the climate at the poles. It's called the um, polar type. The area around the North Pole has a polar climate. That's northern Canada, Greenland and the northern part of Europe and Russia. As you probably know already, the polar climate is very cold and very dry. Second, we have the continental climate. It is very common. Now, the continental climate is warmer than the polar climate, but it is still cold and it is also humid. A humid climate has a lot of water in the atmosphere. The air is wet. So that's the polar climate and the continental climate. Next, we have the mild climate. Mild means not hot and not cold. The eastern states of the US have a mild climate. A lot of Europe has a mild climate and a few parts of southern Africa and southern and eastern Australia. China also has a mild climate. The fourth climate type is called dry. Dry, in this case, means no rain or not very much rain. We can find this climate in all the continents. It is in the western states of the USA and in the southern parts of South America. It's in large parts of Africa and Asia and it is the climate 
of most of Australia. Of course, deserts have a dry climate, like the Sahara Desert in North Africa. Dry climates are very hot in the day, but in winter they are very cold at night. The fifth climate type is called tropical. Why tropical? It is the climate in many areas between the tropics. The Tropic of Cancer, north of the equator, and the Tropic of Capricorn, south of the equator. The tropical climate is hot, sometimes very hot. It is also humid. Finally, we have the mountain climate. Mountains, of course, are high. Some mountains are very high. The height, or altitude, of these mountains affects the climate. The highest mountains in the world are the Rockies in the west of the U.S., um, the Andes in the west of South America, then the uh, Alps in the centre of Europe and, of course, the Himalayas in the north of India. In these mountain areas, it is colder than the rest of the region. Why? Because the area is high above sea level. All right, you guys, so that was actually really long and really interesting. Some new information I personally didn't know until now. Okay, so we have the first climate type is called polar, and it has that dark green color to it on the map. Okay, so polar, as you can guess, is very cold and also very dry. Okay, and then we have continental, has that light green to it, and con continental is also cold and it's also humid you guys okay so it's still cold and humid then we have mild so mild has that yellow color to it and mild is actually a little bit better now so warm and humid then we have dry that orange color which is hot in daytime but cold at night that's what the professor said so dry hot in daytime but cold at night and we have tropical tropical is that red color it's hot and humid okay so hot and humid that's tropical and finally we have mountain that's the mountain type that's kind of black and white you know so it has that white color and based on the altitude affects climate okay so it's not one fixed climate like the rest it just depends on the altitude Okay, so what is the type, uh, what is the climate type for your country? So if we're going to be talking about Saudi Arabia, let's actually have a look here and go and check. So we know for a fact that where is the Middle East? The Middle East is about right here, right? So if we're going to be talking about the Middle East, right, as where we live, we'll probably say it's maybe warm and humid. Yeah, we can say warm and humid and basically also a mix of dry depending on where you live exactly in the Middle East. Okay, very simple stuff. What else do we got? Okay, here we have, let me actually go into the skills check here. Don't worry, these are just examples. I don't know, this is probably a glitch. So we have predicting with and but or because. All of these are joining words, you guys. I talked about this in the previous units, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, right? So we have speakers often use joining words to connect two pieces of information. We can often predict the next piece of information from the joining word. So if I say because as a joining word, I know that I'm going to give a reason to why I'm saying something, right? So if I say, right, uh, I want to be a chef because, and I can already tell where I'm going with this, because I like cooking or I like food, right? So if I'm saying or between two, th two things, it probably means that I'm going to be giving multiple suggestions to someone, right? If I say but, it probably means that, hey, this is good or bad, 
but look on the bright side or but look you gotta look somewhere else so either negative or positive depending on how you say it in a sentence right so all of these are called joining words and we use them to connect two pieces of information together okay simple stuff let's just move on here we have exercise G let me actually open this so I can read it we have listen to the summary number the next piece of information in each case okay you guys so I'm, I'm guessing a professor is gonna start talking and we're gonna have to complete his sentences okay you guys based on obviously the number so let's go have a listen 47 exercise G listen to the summary number the next piece of information in each case so to sum up in this lecture we have heard a definition of climate and and information about climate types because he was just talking about climates so climate types so number one climate types so there is a polar climate at the North Pole and and the South Pole right so what's the opposite of North you guys that's correct South Pole so South Pole will be number two we talked about the continental climate that is warmer than the polar climate but okay it's warmer than the polar climate but how or however it is still cold you guys okay so where is it still cold is right here so it is still cold it's obviously nowhere it's not near as cold as polar climate but it's still cold okay third the mild climate mild means not hot and and also not cold hence the name you know mild something in between so not hot not cold okay what's next it's the dry climate now um dry climates have no rain or or not very much rain okay so basically either no rain at all or not very much rain maybe just a little bit okay deserts are obviously dry climates they are very hot in the day but but very cold at night I, al I already gave you guys the definition for the dry climate dry climate means very hot in the day and very cold at night so number six will be very cold at night and now the fifth climate the tropical climate tropical climates are between the Tropic of Cancer and and the Tropic of Capricorn you, you guys saw that on the map okay so the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn okay finally there is the mountain climate mountain areas have a special climate because because the land is very high so based on obviously the altitude that we just talked about climate can change right so land is very high will be number eight okay and I think doesn't uncheck we already know the answers so that's all good anything else and so there we have our six climates okay so that was it pretty good stuff simple stuff so far you guys now let's move on to speaking all right you guys now let's move on to lesson two speaking and here we have some pictures of obviously two different places so we have an Inuit woman an Inuit igloo an Inuit dog sled and here we have Maasai men with spears then we have Maasai mud huts and a Maasai man with his cows and you guys will understand these places and these different people a little bit more throughout this lesson okay so exercise a here here we have look at the photographs above and dis discuss these questions okay so obviously we're gonna be talking about which region which region is cold hot dry sunny cloudy and humid is high above sea level has a lot of snow and rain is hard to live in and finally is interesting to visit
So I'm not going to answer these right now, but as we go forward with the lesson, you guys should be able to form your own answers to these questions, okay? So it's not one definitive answer, all right? So let's actually have a listen here to exercise B. Listen to a tutor, right? Look at the handout on the right. So let me actually open this for you guys, okay? So here we have the handout that we have. Here, have a listen and you'll understand what I'm talking about. 49. Lesson 2. Speaking. Exercise B. Listen to a tutor. Look at the handout on the right. Don't forget that we have our second tutorial on Wednesday... What's the date? The 15th. Yes, Wednesday the 15th. It's at 3 o'clock. The topic this week is... Let me see. How do humans adapt to their environment? OK, so think about that question and do some research before the tutorial. I want you to look at either the Inuit of Northern Canada or the Maasai of East Africa. Find out about their region and, in particular, research the geography of the region and the climate. OK, so that's next Wednesday, the 15th, at 3. How do humans adapt to their environment? See you then. All right. I hope you guys were able to understand a little bit more about the Maasai and the Inuit. Obviously, you guys will get the idea as we move forward. So here we have number one. What extra information is in the hound out that was not mentioned in the audio? And the first one that comes to, to mind is the room because she said everything else basically so she said the date time uh human geography faculty tutorial topic the inuit or the maasai and she gave us the research that we should do but she did she failed to mention the room so that's the extra information so room b7 is the extra information in the handout okay here you guys we have highlighted words in yellow so we have faculty tutorial adapt environment geography climate and living things right and these are definitions for these words right so we have a the normal pattern of weather in a region over a long period of time and I think you guys know this it's climate right climate oh climate means the normal pattern of weather in a particular region over a long period of time right and then we have B a meeting with a tutor to discuss ideas about a topic. What is that? When you meet a tutor to discuss ideas about a certain topic. That's correct. It's called a tutorial, right? Even coming from the word tutor. So, tutorial. Okay? Now, number C, or C, a university department for a subject or group of subjects. And I'm pretty sure all of you guys know this. A university department for a subject or group of subjects is called a faculty. If I go, uh, I'll, I'll go into faculty of business, faculty of English, or English studies, faculty of eco economics, okay? So, faculty. And then we have D, an area with humans, plants, and animals, obviously, or and etc. Obviously, this is basically everything around us, so in environment right silent and you guys environment all right and what else do we have here we have e simply change you guys know when when we talk about you know humans changing animals changing what do i exactly mean by change right what i mean is to simply adapt right so people adapt and that's what it means to change right so adapt and then we have mountains, rivers, deserts, etc. What is that? That's geography, right? That's basically the study of geography. So that basically sums it up. So you you study mountains, rivers, deserts, etc. Some other stuff. Okay. So geography. Oh, geography. Okay. And finally, we have plants, animals, insects. These are just I'm pro probably say. These are living things. That's what we got. So, living things. Okay? 
So climate, tutorial, faculty, environment, adapt, geography, and living things. Okay, you guys? Now let's move on. Here we have listen to part of a tutorial, make notes about the Inuit in the table on the right. Okay, so now we're going to be listening to a tutorial, the one that we just got an introduction to. Okay, so I want you guys to either use this table right here, okay, or pull out a sticky note and make notes as we go, okay? I'm going to be playing it once, and after that, I'm actually going to be writing my own notes right here as well, and after that, we'll compare notes, all right? So here we go. Let's have a listen. 50. Exercise C. Listen to part of the tutorial. Make notes about the Inuit in the table on the right. Right. Anya, so what can you tell us about the Inuit? OK, well, first, geography. They live in northern Canada and in Greenland. The area is very flat and low. It is only a few metres above sea level. Some of it is an ice sheet. Sorry, what does that mean? It's a large area of ice on top of the sea. OK, go on. Right. The Inuit live in a polar climate, so it is very cold. It snows from late August to April. Interesting. Oh, I forgot to say, the temperature in winter sometimes goes down to minus 75. Sorry, what did you say? Minus 75. Minus 75? That's freezing! What other living things are in their environment? Well, there are polar bears, seals and whales. There aren't any trees and there are only a few bushes. So how do they adapt to their environment? Well, there are two main ways. Firstly, they have very thick clothes. They make coats and hats from fur. The fur comes from polar bears and they make boots from seal skin. And secondly, they live in houses called igloos. They make the houses from ice, but they are very warm. Anything else? Um, yes. They use the dogs from the region. The dogs pull sledges on the snow. What are sledges? They are carts, but they don't have wheels. All right, I hope you're able to get some notes down and uh, I think you guys probably noticed that most, most of the audio in that tutorial was based off of uh, these photographs here, right? So she talked a little bit briefly, about, she talked briefly about a dog sled and igloo and basically Inuit as a whole, right? The Maasai and different people, okay? So you guys could probably answer some of these questions now. So we know that the Inuit is not high above sea level, so we'll probably say the Maasai is high above sea level. What has a lot of snow slash rain? We'd probably say the Inuit, just because that place is full of snow, and I'm guessing it rains as well. What is hard to live in? Obviously, this answer will depend on you as a student. So will you be able to tolerate you know extreme cold like I'm not talking you know your average you know winter or freezing winter even I'm talking about minus 75 degrees like you're basically gonna be like I can't even imagine living like that so for you and for me be uh, I'd rather live in a hot kind of poor place instead of living you know in constantly in thick jackets and just basically I don't know, man. I, I think that living in the Maasai would be better. Obviously, everyone has his own answer. You do you, okay? And what is interesting to visit? For me, obviously, even though I wouldn't want to live there, I think that living with the Inuit uh, people would probably be, you know, an interesting visit, okay? Maybe not the best, but obviously interesting nonetheless. And what is cold, hot, dry, sunny, cloud, humid? Probably the Maasai. It's, you know, the Inuit, it's simply, it's never going to be hot. It's never going to be, you know, it might be dry, but I don't think so. Never sunny and probably never, ever humid. Okay, so yeah. Now, let's actually move now to these notes here. I'm not going to be able to write them down, so I hope you're able to get some 
notes I already got mine here so here we have first of all we have geography and like she said the Inuit live live in North Canada Greenland okay what else you guys she said that yeah it's flat flat and low right and it has sort of an ice sheet so basically what is an ice sheet an ice sheet is a layer of ice on top of the sea okay so it's flat low and an ice sheet okay and now let's move on to climate for climate I'll probably say very cold and I'll probably add a minus 75 degrees Celsius and I'll probably also say snow it snows from late August to April okay so are there other living things with uh, Inuits yes there are polar bears seals whales that's about it <laughs> but there are no trees and we do have some small bushes but yeah that's about it and finally let's talk a little bit about adaptation so how do humans adapt to this extreme weather because as we know you know humans were not you know biologic are not biologically able to withstand such extreme cold right so how do they adapt to that so they obviously use thick clothes from animal skins and they make boots from seal skin okay and they use something here actually in the photograph called an Inuit igloo or basically an igloo short you guys know these penguin ca cartoons that have that igloo thingy yeah it's basically it's made of snow but it's actually very warm inside all right I don't know how that's possible don't ask me but it's very warm inside okay so these were the notes that I wrote down compare yours to mine and see if yours need any adjustment all right so now let's we're gonna be reading the tutorial now so it's the same tutorial probably not complete but most of it is here and we wanna complete the sentences right but before we do that let's actually check the skills check here so here we have something called taking part in a tutorial so if you're the one speaking in a tutorial or if you're someone simply listening to a tutorial and wanna be engaging throughout the whole tutorial how do you do so right what are some phrases that can help you initiate conversation right or attract the listeners attention right so if you're a speaker you can start by saying there are two obviously two is subjective to change so we can say there are two three four five main ways right and then continue with what you're gonna say and then you can also start or keep going by saying firstly or secondly right so firstly I want to talk about this and secondly I want to talk about that right and as you as you keep going if you forgot to say something right or you want to just add on you could also say oh I forgot to say and keep going right we heard we actually heard all of these listening to the audio but I don't know if you guys noticed that now let's move to the listeners POV a little bit so if I'm a listener how can I interrupt basically a, a speaker talking in a tutorial in a professional manner right so obviously I can ask him a question before starting so what can you tell us about and then the topic right and in the middle I could probably say or after raising my hand or I don't know permission wise I could say what is or what are and depending on what what it is I'm talking about right and if I didn't say something or did not didn't say didn't understand something correctly I can probably say what did you say as in uh, sorry I don't understand can you repeat yourself right and if it's done I could probably say go on go on here simply means all right you can move on move forward we're done okay and after that in the end if you think that the speaker is done but you're not too sure you can probably say anything else I mean if the speakers done he'll say no if he's not done he'll say yes and he'll keep going okay so now let's open here the reading okay so here we have complete the sentences okay so we have hmm, what do we have here exercise D right so here we have right so can you dash the Inuit so obviously let me check down here so can you tell us you guys okay so what can you tell us 
about the Inuit, right? So what can you tell us about and the topic, the Inuit? Okay, well, first, geography. So she's going to talk first about geography. Some of the land is an ice sheet, okay? So obviously someone probably didn't understand, so he said, or she said, sorry, what is dash? What is a probably an ice sheet, right? Because that just makes sense. What is an ice sheet? She doesn't understand, or he doesn't understand what an ice sheet is. So some of the land is an ice sheet. Sorry, what is an ice sheet? It's a large area of ice on top of the sea. And when understood, they can probably say or simply say, okay, go on. Go on as in, yeah, keep going. I got it now. Right? The Inuit live in a polar climate, so it is very cold. Oh, I forgot, dash. The temperature in winter sometimes goes to minus 75, you guys. And here we can say, I forgot to say, right? So, oh, I forgot to say, the temperature in winter sometimes goes down to minus 75. Okay? And here we have, sorry, what did you say? Okay, like we just said, because probably didn't understand or is in complete shock by the fact that it's freezing cold because it's minus 75 degrees. So, oh, I forgot to say, the temperature in winter sometimes goes down to minus 75 Sorry, what did you say? Minus 75, okay? So, how did they adapt to their environment? Okay, well, there are two main ways, right? That's what we just said here. There are two main ways. So, there are two main ways. Obviously, the number is subject to change. Firstly, they have very thick clothes, and secondly, you know, the tutorial goes on. And finally, you know, the listener asks anything else that you simply want to add. And like I said, if the listener wants to keep going, he'll say yes. If not, he'll end it right there. So, um, yes, they use the dogs from the region uh, on a sledge, okay? All right, you guys, hope you're able to understand how you can engage in a tutorial, right? So from the speaker, there are two main ways, firstly and secondly, and oh, I forgot to say, these are just simple phrases that can be used in a tutorial. And from the listener, from the listener's POV, we can say, what can you tell us about what is slash R, what did you say, go on, and anything else. All right, you guys? So now let's move on, and this right here is going to require you guys to do some research. So we just... You, you know, you guys see the style of research on the Inuit, right? I want you guys to do something similar, but for the Maasai, right? So, research information. Read the information about the, the geography of the Maasai region. So, think of it as, instead of the Inuit region, it's now the Maasai region. And you can work in groups, so three people a group is fine, right? And read the information you know, in the book and do your own research, right, about, you know, you could use your notes from here to make even more notes about the Maasai. So, for example, you can talk about geography from the internet, of course, climate, other living things, and finally, adaptation. How can humans adapt to this different or completely different lifestyle, I should say, okay? So, that was speaking, you guys. Now, let's move on. All right, you guys, now moving on to lesson three, vocabulary and pronunciation. And here we have five pictures, obviously, different places around the world with different climates, okay, and different, obviously, seasons. All right, so let's hop into exercise A here. Here we have ask and answer in pairs. So what I would like for you guys to do is to ask these questions to each other, and everybody should have a specific answer depending on you know, where he lives if you guys do it online, or if you guys are in the same class, you guys should take turns with these questions, okay? So, let's actually have a listen here. So, what's the weather like today? So, if I'm going to answer this personally, on the day that this this was recorded, it was a pretty humid day, I'd say, right? So, sunny and humid. So, what's the weather like today? It's sunny and humid, okay? And then we have number two, what was the weather like last weekend? And if I recall, the weather was actually really, really sunny last weekend. So 
the weather was sunny last weekend, okay? And then we have number three, what will the weather be like tomorrow? Okay, so based on today, the weather will probably either be dry or sunny tomorrow, okay? So what will the weather be like tomorrow? It'll be either sunny or dry, okay, you guys? Now let's move to the skills check here. Here we have using the preposition like. So the thing about using the preposition like is that we use it when we're asking about the weather. Okay, so for example, if I ask, what's the weather like today? What's the weather like last weekend? What will the weather be like tomorrow? What's the weather like today? Again, right? So all of these, we use the preposition like. Now, take note that we do not use the preposition when answering. So if someone asks me, what's the weather like today? I, I don't say it's like sunny, humid. No, that's wrong. I just say it's sunny or humid or it's good. If someone's asking me about the future, I can say it's going to be either sunny or humid. Okay, so no like, don't use like in the answer only when asking about the weather. Okay, now let's go to exercise B. Here we have, look at the words in the box on the right. Mark each word, adjective or verb. So let me open this here. Okay, so here we have these words and let's mark each one if it's either an adjective or a verb. And I'm pretty sure you guys know what an adjective is and what a verb is, you guys. Adjectives are describing words and verbs are action words, okay? So we have number one. What is number one? Cloudy. If I say it's a cloudy day, obviously, it's an adjective. So I'll just write ADJ, adjective. Then we have cold, also a describing word, adjective. Here we have dry, also an adjective. Oh. And then we have foggy. Foggy is also an adjective, you guys. And here we have hot, also an adjective. Okay. And then we have raining. Raining is actually a verb, you guys, okay? It's an action. So raining, and then we have snowing, also a verb. Stormy, that's an adjective. And then we have sunny. Sunny is also an adjective. It's a sunny day, right? I'm describing the day, so adjective. Then we have wet, also an adjective. And finally, we have windy, which is also an adjective. Just like I said, it's a windy day. It's a windy week, right? All of these are adjectives. So most of these were adjectives except for raining and snowing. Now, what do we have here? Number two, ask about the weather in the photographs above. Use words from the box. Okay, so the words that we just uh, tried to identify, if it was either an adjective or verb, we're going to be using these to ask questions about the weather in the photographs in the five photographs above okay so he, he gives us an example here what's the weather like in photograph one I answer by it's fo foggy right and then we have number two it's probably if I'm gonna answer I'll probably say it's windy sunny and dry right what's the weather like in photograph number two What's the weather like in photograph number two? Yeah, I'll probably say it's windy, sunny, and dry, okay? What's the weather like in photograph three? I'll probably say it's hot, sunny, and dry, okay? What's the weather like in photograph number four? I'll say it's snowing slash it's cold, okay? And finally, what's the photograph, uh, what's the weather like in photograph number five? Now, I'll, I'm going to say some things here. I'll probably say it's raining, it's wet, and it's cold. Okay? So now let's move on. Here we have look at the questions in exercise A above, underline the verb in each question, and circle the preposition. Okay, so take a look. He wants us to underline the verb in each question. These are the questions from exercise A right and he wants us to circle the preposition okay so let's have a read with number one here what's the weather like today so instantly we talked about how we use the preposition like when talking about or when asking about the weather so circle the preposition okay so can I circle yep so what's the weather like today so like is the preposition can you guys tell me where the verb is 
that's correct. It's verb to be. It's hidden in the apostrophe form. So what's when I say what's here, I mean what is, right? So this is right here. Yep. So what this s right here refers to is, which is a verb, verb to be. What is the weather like today? Okay? Now let's go to number two. What was the weather like last weekend? Okay? Again, preposition. It's a question, so like, oh, so what was the weather like last weekend? And where's the verb, you guys? That's correct. The verb is was, okay? Verb to be in the past, past tense, so was where, okay? So what was, okay? So was and like, the verb and the preposition. And finally, we have number three. What will the weather be like tomorrow? Again, like is the preposition. Okay, and here we have two verbs. Can you guys name them? That's correct. The first one is will. So what will the weather be like tomorrow? Okay, will is the first verb, but we have one more actually. That's correct. Be is also considered a verb here. Okay, so what will the weather be like tomorrow? Okay, you guys, now let's move on. Here we have exercise D. Look at the conversation on the right. Okay, so this is going to be mostly listening, you guys. Let me actually open this. Okay, so listen and follow the conversation in the pictures. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going a little bit with the pictures while you guys are listening. Okay, and then I want you guys to pause the video and practice this conversation in pairs, right? So use a similar topic or the same topic if you guys want, but switch it up, right? So talk with your friends, with your family members, whoever you're with right now, and try and have a conversation with them, okay? Here you go. 51. Lesson 3. Vocabulary and Pronunciation. Exercise D1. Listen. Follow the conversation in the pictures. Hi. How are things? They're good, thanks. What's the weather like with you? Oh, it's great. Very warm and sunny. You're lucky. It's terrible here. Why? Is it raining? Yes, it is. It's pouring. Oh, dear. Okay. Hope you guys that was just a short conversation about the weather obviously someone starting a conversation by asking about the weather and how things are and you know and just keep going from there all right so like I said practice the conversation and let's move on okay so here we have exercise E listen to some conversations so we're gonna be listening to some conversation answer the questions about each conversation Okay, so we're going to be listening to different conversations here. I'm going to let it play the first time. Oh, this one's written. Let me reset that. Okay, so we're going to be listening to all these conversations. I'll let it play the first time, and then we'll see where we're going to go from there. Okay, have a listen. 53. Exercise E. Listen to some conversations. Answer the questions about each conversation. 1. What's the weather forecast for the weekend? Well, it's going to be cloudy on Saturday. Oh, no. What about Sunday? It's going to rain, I'm afraid. Typical. It always rains at the weekend. 2. Does it often snow in London? No, it doesn't. But it often rains. What's the average temperature in the summer? I'm not sure. About 17 degrees, I think. 3. Bulent, what's the climate like in your country? Well, in the summer, it's hot and there isn't much rain. What about in the autumn or the winter? In the winter, it's sometimes very cold. 4. It's getting colder. Yes, it is. Winter's nearly here. It's dark at five in the evening now. I hate the winter. Okay, now that we had a listen, let's listen to that one more time, but we'll be pausing it to write the answers down. Okay, here we go. 
53. Listen to some conversations. Answer the questions about each conversation. 1. What's the weather forecast for the weekend? Well, it's going to be cloudy on Saturday. Oh no. Okay, let me pause it here. The question What's the weather forecast for the weekend? And the answer to that is. It's going, oh, going to be cloudy on Saturday, right? That's what we just heard. It's going to be cloudy on Saturday. Let's keep going. Ooh, what about Sunday? It's going to rain, I'm afraid. Typical. So it's going to be cloudy on Saturday, and we can probably say, uh, it's. Going to rain on Sunday. Okay? It always rains at the weekend. Two. Does it often snow in London? No, it doesn't. But it often rains. What's the average temperature in the summer? I'm not sure. About 17 degrees, I think. Okay, so what's the average summer temperature in London? And like we just heard, he's not really too sure, so we're going to write about 17. Three. Oh, okay, so <laughs> what's the average summer temperature in London? We'll go about 17 degrees, okay? Let's keep going. Bulent, what's the climate like in your country? Well, in the summer, it's hot and there isn't much rain. Okay, let's pause this. So, what's the climate like in Bulent's country? Okay, so he just said,、uh, let's write down in the summer, right? It's hot. So, it's hot and There isn't much rain, right? That's what he just said. Let's keep going. What about in the autumn or the winter? In the winter, it's sometimes very cold. Okay, so he said in the winter. So we'll, we'll write down in the winter, it's sometimes. Very cold. Anything else? Four. Okay. It's getting colder. Yes, it is. Winter's nearly here. It's dark at five in the evening now. I hate the winter. Okay, so it's getting colder. So we'll probably say which season is it? It's probably autumn. So A U T U M N. Oh, and I did not write the A. Cool. So, awesome, okay? So, what's the weather forecast for the weekend? It's going to be cloudy on Saturday. It's going to rain. Let me keep reading. It's going to rain on Sunday, okay? What's the average summer temperature in London? About 17 degrees. Number three, what's the climate like in Bulent's country? In the summer, it's hot and there isn't much rain. However, in the winter, it's sometimes very cold. So, not always cold, just sometimes. And finally, which season is it? It's autumn. All right? Now let's move on, you guys. Okay. So here we have pronunciation check saying the or d. e Okay? So we have different pronunciations depending on where、uh, the is, is placed, right? So we pronounce the letter e, so this letter right here, in two different ways, right? So if it's before. A consonant letter, we don't really pronounce it. So, for example, the day, the night, the play, right? Bef but if it's before a vowel letter, we pronounce the E. So, I can say the answer, the elephants, the apples. You get what I mean? So, if it's a consonant letter, I'm not going to pronounce the E. So, the day, the night, the month, right? But if it's a vowel letter, I'm going to have to say the E. 
okay so the answer the elephants the umbrellas the apples okay so now let's actually open this we can have just a quick exercise here so mark each the one or two in each sentences so what's the forecast for the weekend okay so one is the one with the consonant letter and two is the vowel letter right so I'll probably say this is one right because the F obviously forecast not a vowel okay so the that will be number one what's the average temperature in the summer okay so hmm, here we have our oh, here we have two that's actually give me a second so we're gonna say one one because the weekend the weekend is obviously W so it's a consonant okay what's the average temperature in the summer so obviously the first the will be two because the average obviously a vowel letter here temperature in the summer summer is not a vowel it's a consonant so number number this second one will be the first what about in the autumn so obviously autumn is a vowel letter a so that will be number two it's dark at five in the evening obviously evening again two because e is a vowel okay now lesson you guys and let's check our answers 54 pronunciation check listen and check what's the forecast for the weekend what's the average temperature in the summer what about in the autumn it's dark at five in the evening now okay now I want you guys to practice saying these sentences until you get these two things down the fact that before a consonant letter we don't pronounce the E and before a vowel letter we pronounce the E All right. now let's move on to our final skills check here starting a conversation and you guys know there are probably probably like a million ways you can start a conversation with but you know a good way that you can start a conversation is talking about the weather you know you could use it as your friend whether in a negative way or a positive way right so to start a conversation talking about the weather you could probably say a simple phrase like wow it's nice outside or it's nice today and probably a question hey is it raining outside what a lovely day right so things of that nature can be used to start a conversation and here we can actually listen to the start of some conversation using the weather. Here, have a listen. 55. Skills check. Listen to the start of some conversations. It's nice today. Yes, it is. Lovely weather for... Is it raining outside? I'm afraid so. It's horrible, but I think... What a lovely day! It is. It's beautiful. Much better than... And you guys see, by just using the weather to your advantage as in asking a question or simply saying a phrase, you can spark a conversation and start talking to someone. Whether it's a friend, a stranger, that's a totally different story. Okay, you guys? Simple stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Alright, you guys, now moving on to lesson for reading. Here we have, look at the text opposite, read the heading and the introduction, what will the text talk be about, and number the correct items below in the correct order, look quickly at the text and check. Okay, so before I do that, let's actually check the skills check here. Here we have, using an introduction. So many texts begin with an introduction, that's obvious. The introduction is the first paragraph. Read the introduction carefully and when reading it carefully it can actually answer two important questions. What are those? It's what information will be in this text, okay? And what order will the information be in, okay? So these questions may or may not be, but for the most part are often answered in the introduction okay so let's have a read here so this is called the heading and then we have the introduction okay so adapting to the environment how do animals live in different regions of the world humans and other living things adapt to their environment humans adapt their behavior 
They build warm houses or cool houses. They wear warm clothes or cool clothes. Animals adapt in a different way. Over thousands of years, animals adapt their bodies to their environment. In this article, we look first at animal adaptation in general. Then, we see the adaptations of two particular animals, the polar bear and the giraffe. Finally, we consider the effects of climate change. Can animals adapt? Okay, so based on what we just read, you guys, so now I know what information will be in this text and its order as well, right? Weird, I cannot open this, so we're just gonna have to do this orally, you guys. So number one, what is the text gonna be talking about? It's gonna be talking about animal adaptation in general, okay? That's the main story. And then he's going to get a little bit more specific into polar bears and giraffes. So animal adaptation in general, polar bears, and then giraffes. And finally, he's going to talk a little bit about climate change, okay? Now, let's look at the photographs on the right. What do you know about polar bears and what about giraffes? Okay, so before I do that, let's actually continue reading this and we're going to read all of it and then we'll move on to the questions okay so here we go animals adapt to survive in an environment animals survive for many reasons some animals are stronger than other animals some animals are faster some animals have better camouflage so other animals can't see them some animals are taller so they can reach fruit or leaves some animals are more protected for example, the elephant has a thick skin, and the turtle has a shell. Better adapted animals live. Adaptation is the key to survival. Polar ba bears live in a region of ice and snow. They have white fur, so it is difficult to see them in their environment. The fur is thick, so they stay warm. They have big paws. The paws spread their weight so they can walk in the snow. Polar bears eat fish, so they have to be good swimmers. Their big paws help them swim. They can close their noses under the water. Giraffes live in a region of grassland and high trees. They have brown and yellow skin, so it is difficult to see them in their environment. They have long, thin legs, so they stay cool. They have long necks, so they can eat leaves from the high trees. The trees have thorns, but giraffes have thick clips so they do not get hurt. Their long necks also help them to see lions and leopards in the distance. Many scientists say that the climate is changing. Can humans and animals adapt to climate change? Humans can adapt because they can change their behavior. They can wear thicker clothes or make their houses cooler. Animals can adapt too but it takes thousands of years. Animals cannot change their bodies in 20 or 50 years. Okay, now that we read the text, let's answer the questions. So here we have, again, look at the photographs on the right. What do you know about polar bears and what do you know about giraffes, okay? So this will probably all depend on you guys. So whatever you know about polar bears. So I know that polar bears have you know, white fur, they live in snow areas, right? They eat fish, and they are good swimmers, right? And what do I know about giraffes? Uh, they have long, long lips, or not long lips, long neck, right? So long necks, and they have thick lips, okay? And they have, they have thin legs, right? That helps them stay cool. And they can see you know, that long neck helps them to see leopards and lions from afar. All right? And then we have exercise C. Read the second paragraph, underline the word, which means, and we have definition, and we got to write down the word. Okay? So here. So we have read the second paragraph, underline, and then write the word, which means live, not die. Okay? So live as a verb, not die. So to live and not die... Uh, probably means survive, right? Animals adapt to survive, so live and not die. So, survive. That's what it means. Colors or patterns to hide in an environment. 
and this one I know this one actually it's called camouflage what is a camouflage you guys it's what animals and humans as well especially people in the military that use to you know hide or have a very similar color to the or pattern to an environment so for example uh, you guys see snipers in movies and even in real life in the army especially snipers because they gotta stay in you know very still in the same place for long periods of time so they wear this kind of suit that allows them to look like they're a tree or a plant so you know when when the guy or girl lays on the ground and gets in position they do not get spotted right same thing with animals you have some lizards that can change their uh, camouflage and they can change their color to you know better fit the environment so they don't get seen or eaten by other predators or animals okay so camouflage is the word we're looking for so camo flage okay get to something high what is that that is probably the word where is it it's probably reach so some animal animals are taller so they can reach fruit or leaves okay so get to something high is probably reach okay or it is reach kept from danger kept from danger is protected you guys so some animals are more protected obviously protected here means kept from danger okay so protected and finally and not finally here we have number five a hard covering so a turtle has a shell you guys know the shell of a turtle right that hard thick shell yeah that's a hard covering it's called a shell and finally we have living or simply staying alive and this is called survival you guys okay so it's just like the word survive live and not die and this one means living and actually staying alive okay so adaptation is key to survival so living and staying alive and not dying survival okay so survive camouflage reach protected shell and finally survival okay now let's close this here we have exercise D and you, I want you guys to work on this in, in pairs so you know get a friend right or a classmate and I want one of you guys to read about polar bears from the, the text and one to specifically read about giraffes and find these body parts of the body in the photograph so we have fur leg lips neck nose paw and skin and you can make some you know very simple notes about simple adaptations right how can you know how or how have these animals adapted over time to the environment right so let me now try so for example let's say we have let's start with polar bears so they have white fur if I'm gonna make a note about that I'll probably say it's difficult to see in the snow right we just got that from the text so white fur difficult to see and snow and then we have thick fur obviously the white fur is also thick so that they can stay warm like I said they live in snow places so it's probably freezing cold so they need the fur to stay warm okay and we also know that they have big paws do we have paw here? yeah we do so big paws right that helps them walk on snow and helps them to swim right it evens their weight out and finally we have nose that they use for breathing and they can close it for swimming okay now that we've done those let's move on to giraffes okay so giraffes have brown or yellow both are correct skin so they don't have fur they have skin just like us humans and they can be difficult to see when they are in their own environment and they also have long and thin legs that helps them to stay cool okay we have legs here yeah we do and then we also have neck so long necks that helps giraffes eat leaves from high trees and to see lions and leopards in the distance okay and what else do we do they have they have thick lips yeah I forgot about that so they have thick lips that help them you know eat their food better because you know thorns these things right here can be difficult to eat but they do not hurt them because of their thick lips okay so these were all the parts of the body and I did notes for all the adaptations 
yours should be similar to what I just said okay now read the final paragraph okay and why is climate change a problem for animals okay let's read that one more time actually so we have many scientists say that the climate is changing can humans and animals adapt to climate change humans can adapt because they can change their behavior they can wear thicker clothes or make their houses cooler animals can adapt too but it takes thousands of years animals cannot change their bodies in 20 or 50 years now obviously this possible or this answer will be up to you but one of the possible answers that I can use I'll probably say you know animals can adapt or cannot adapt their bodies quickly while us humans can use machines and other equipment for help right so let's say us humans when you know when the temperature gets really hot during summer I'm just giving an example here you guys we use air conditioners right keeps the keeps the entire house cold you're having fun you know you're comfortable but an animal an animal doesn't have that luxury right they're not smart enough to create their own machines right that's humanity's thing right so what do animals do their bodies adapt over time just like when like if you get or let's just use cooking for example so if you cook a lot as a human right if you cook a lot your fingertips will get a little bit desensitized over time so what you once felt was extreme pain from you know obviously the fire and cooking and stuff you now you obviously feel it but it doesn't trigger that same response in your brain that oh hey this is really hot you need to take your hand off it because your body now knows that hey this is not so bad you can cook it's fine nothing's nothing bad's gonna happen right this is how biologically or how it bio how it works biologically at least right so for animals they don't have those machines and that is why their bodies take more time to adapt to the environment right so you know some something like the polar bear for example you know how long do you think it's gonna take like they have thick fur you guys if they don't live in climate in cold climates they will die right because of the obviously if they live in warm climates it's like living in a constant summer basically it's like being cooked like <laughs> there's no other way to describe it okay so that was my answer probably got a little bit off topic but hey this is just to tell you guys about climate change so now we have exercise F look at the highlighted words in the text let me actually open this so you guys can get a better view look at the hi highlighted words in the text and here we have warm cool stronger faster and more protected right so what part of speech are they so warm and cool are adjectives right we that we if just read it they build warm houses adjective describing word describing word or cool houses also a describing word right and here we have stronger faster more protected also adjectives but they're comparative act adjectives because I'm comparing between animals some are stronger some are faster you know some have better camouflage and some are simply more protected okay so they're adjectives but they're comparative ad adjectives coming from the word compare okay so we'll write down here a D J as an adjective alright you guys so that was reading I'll see you in the next one alright you guys so now let's move on to lesson 5 writing and grammar okay so here we have exercise a study the words in the box okay so before we do that actually let's hop into the skills check one here here we have comparative adjectives and we talked you know briefly about comparative adjectives in the reading section right so we're gonna dive a little bit deeper here okay so we have we make one syllable adjectives into comparatives by adding er right so normal adjectives turn into comparatives when we add er so for example uh, cold becomes colder dry becomes drier hot becomes hotter large becomes larger and etc you got the idea so here we have also have some of these comparative adjectives in sentences such as spring is warm 
warmer than winter, right? I can't say spring is warm than winter. That's a normal adjective. It doesn't work with the sentence. I have to say warmer, E-R in the end, okay? Then winter. Giraffes have longer necks than bears, right? Longer E-R necks than bears, all right? Now, we have also short adjectives. So, with most short adjectives, we just add either E-R as well or simply an R. So, for example, here we have the word large. So, the word large already has an E, so I don't need to add another E. I'll just write R, right? And there also are some adjectives that we sometimes have to, you know, switch the spelling a little bit. So, for example, the word big, I'm going to be adding double G, right? So, big becomes bigger, okay? Sunny, we get rid of the Y and add I-E-R. Same story with dry. I get rid of the Y and I add I-E-R, okay? So now, let me open this for you guys. Here we have which ones are adjectives, underline them. So these are all words in the box, right? And we want to know which of these are adjectives. So we start with number one, better. Better is obviously an adjective, right? And what are adjectives, you guys? Adjectives are describing words, okay? We talked about this before, just reminding all of you that adjectives are describing words. So we have consider, not an adjective, or not an adjective, sorry, cooler. Yes, that's an ad adject ad <laughs> excuse me, adjective. Danger, not an adjective. Faster, that's true. Stronger, that's true. That's also an adjective. Summer, winter, not an adjective. Okay, so number two, what parts of speech are the other words? And here what he basically wants to know is what are these words, if they're not adjectives, what are are they exact, exactly? So let me actually write this down. So consider, and I'll open a bracket, and I'll write a V down. And you guys know what this V stands for? It stands for verb. What is consider? You know, guy, you guys know, sh or should know, what verbs are. Verbs are action words, right? So when I say, I'm going to consider doing it, that probably, I'm doing an action, I'm considering, right? So, consider is a verb. What's the second word? We have danger. Okay, and what is danger, you guys? Danger is just simply a noun, okay? And what else do we have? We have um, consider, danger, and then we have summer, right? So, summer, also a noun, you guys, okay? Simple noun, nothing fancy. Then, finally, we have winter. Okay, and we that's also a noun, yeah. So consider verb, danger noun, summer noun, and winter noun. Better, cooler, faster, stronger are all adjectives. Okay, now let's move on. Here we have exercise B. Study the words below. They are all from the listening and the reading in this unit. Okay, so all of these words are from the listening section and the reading section. So we should be familiar with these words. Write the comparative form of each adjective and be careful with the spelling. Okay, so before I do that, let, let us actually take a look at skills check 2 and 3 here. Here we have comparative adjectives as well. Now we talked about how we change or how do we add the comparative form to adjectives and short adjectives. But here we have long adjectives and how we add that comparative form to an adjective or a long adjective I should say. So with long adjectives we put more the word more in front of the adjectives. So here for example if I say interesting I don't say interesting er I say more interesting that makes sense interesting er just sounds it's wrong it doesn't make sense okay you'll leave people confused if you ever, if you ever say that okay also the word humid Right? I don't say humider, it's humider, no, it's more humid, okay? So for long adjectives, we add the word more before the adjective to turn it into a comparative adjective, okay? Now, here we have skills check three. All right, so we have a small number of adjectives, right, that use a completely different word to change into a comparative adjective. For example, the word good, right? Simple adjective. 
If I want to change it, I'm going to say better. And that's why in exercise A, I said that better is an adjective or a comparative adjective. Bad becomes worse. I don't say better. I don't say gooder. I don't say she's gooder than me. I say she's better than me. Okay, same thing with bad. I don't say she's better than me. She's worse than me. All right, simple stuff. Now, let's go back to exercise B. So we're going to be writing the comparative form of each of these adjectives, but guys, I want you to be careful with the spelling, okay? Okay, so here we have fast. Obviously, fast becomes faster, right? Simple ER. Now, we have tall. Tall becomes taller, right? Simple ER as well. Thick. What a thick, you guys. Again, just add a simple ER thicker. Then we have cool. Also add an ER, so cooler. Cloudy. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. So we're going to write cloud and then get rid of the Y, add I, and then ER. Always do that with any, you know, adjective that has the letter Y in the end. So cloudy becomes cloudier. Then we have F. Big obviously becomes bigger, double G, and then ER. Protected, you guys, what do you think is the comparative form for the adjective protected? Is it protected or? Nope, it's more protected. Okay, you guys remember when you talked about uh, using more with long adjectives? That's one of these cases. Then we have dangerous, what do you guys think? Again, simply more and write the word again, dangerous. All right, and then we have good becomes better, not gooder, or more good becomes better, and bad becomes worse, okay? Simple stuff, let's move on. So here we have exercise C. Look at table one below, write four sentences, and compare the two towns, okay? So we're gonna be using our comparative adjectives to use here in different sentences to compare the Inuit town and the Maasai town, okay? So here we have an example of what our sentences should look like. The Maasai town is higher than the Inuit town. And based on the information on the table here, we have the height, obviously talking about above sea level here. So 29, 2000 meters. And temperature is at minus four degrees for Inuit town and 28 degrees for Maasai town. Average rainfall, 263 and a thousand and average sunshine per day 5.1 hours and eight hours for Maasai town okay so if I was gonna use sentences that have comparative adjectives com to compare the two towns I'd probably say obviously there's no you know one definite answer you guys can you know use many different answers based on the information given in the table so I could probably say the Inuit town is colder than the Maasai town, right? Because the temperature is much lower in the Inuit town. The Inuit town is lower than the Maasai town, obviously referring to height, as in above sea level, okay? I could also say it is sunnier than the Inuit town. Obviously, it here, I'm talking about the Maasai town, as it's sunnier than the Inuit town. It is wetter than the Inuit town, also referring to the Maasai town. It is wetter because of the average rainfall. Okay, you guys? Simple stuff. Let's move on. Okay, let me open exercise D for you guys here. So here we have, what do we use comparative adjectives for? And I literally just mentioned this like not even five minutes ago. So what do we use comparative adjectives for, you guys? Do we use it to talk about one thing, or to compare many things, or to compare two things? What do you guys think? That's correct. We use it to compare two things. So not one thing, not many things, just two things, OK? Now, here we have two complete the tables. So let's take a look here. Here we have table number two comparatives with short adjectives so obviously these are short adjectives so colder faster right so Greenland dash colder dash Kenya so 
So I'd probably say Greenland is colder than Kenya, right? Number two, giraffes are faster than elephants, right? Now, here we go to table number three, comparatives, but this time with longer adjectives. And we said that with longer adjectives, we use the word more before the adjective itself to turn it into a comparative adjective, okay? So here we have Kenya is, simple verb to be, more humid than, again, oh, than Greenland. Elephants are more protected than giraffes, right? Okay? And then what do we have? Make the comparative statements into yes or no questions. So we're going to be turning these four statements into questions, okay? So Greenland is colder than Kenya. If I want to turn that to a question, I'd probably say, is Greenland colder than Kenya, right? And question mark, obviously. So is Greenland colder than Kenya, right? Number two, giraffes are faster than elephants. I can say as a question, are giraffes, right, faster than elephants, question mark, right? And then what do I have? Let me take a look here. Kenya is more humid than Greenland. I could probably say, hmm, is Kenya more humid than Greenland? And question mark, obviously. And finally, elephants are more protected than giraffes. I'll probably say, are elephants uh, what was it? Are elephants more protected than giraffes? And again, the question mark. Okay, so is Greenland colder than Kenya? Are giraffes faster than elephants? Is Kenya more humid than Greenland? And finally, are elephants more protected than giraffes? Okay, simple stuff, you guys. Let's move on. And what do we have here? Here we have, look at table four. What is the main difference between this table? Let me actually open this. So you guys can get a better, better view here. So what is the main difference between this table? So I'm guessing a table under and tables two and three. Why don't we finish the sentence? Okay, so let's take a look here. Here we have comparatives, but with no second item. So simply, you end with the comparative adjective, basically. So here we have, some animals are more protected. That's it. Some animals are faster. And it's comparative, but here I'm simply comparing with no second item. So nothing after the adjective. So. I can already tell that there's no second item here, so that's the difference, but why? Why do I not add a second item? And I have an answer for that. We don't say the last part of the sentence simply because it's obvious what we're talking about. It's as simple as that. You guys remember when I gave that talk, uh, talk about nouns and pronouns and how, you know, things can get repetitive? Yeah, same thing here, but kind of a little bit different. So. You don't want to sound repetitive, and obviously everybody knows what you're talking about. So if I say, some animals are more protected than other animals. It's not wrong, not necessarily wrong, but it's just, just every, everyone knows what you're talking about. So yeah, if I say some animals are more protected, I'm obviously comparing them without saying that I'm comparing them to other animals, right? Some animals... Uh, some animals are faster, for example. I can just stop there. I don't need to add than other animals. I, I know, I know that you want to compare them to animals. I'm not going to compare them to insects, okay? So it's just something that's obvious, and that is why we don't write it, okay? So what is the second item in these sentences? Okay, 
Some people are happier. Hmm. If I want to say, what is the second item in these sentences? Okay, so we have different sentences here, and he wants us to add a second item. So I'll probably say for number A or A, some people are happier, I'll say, than other people. Right, you guys? Some plants are nicer to eat than other plants. You see how simple this is? And then we have C. Some dogs are more dangerous than other dogs. Right? And then we have, there are two main differences between me and my friend. I'm taller and thinner than my friend. Again, okay? Than my friend. There are many differences between humans and animals. Humans are more intelligent than animals. Obviously, you don't need to write these down. When talking, you could end the sentence right here. So if I say, there are, there are many differences between humans and animals. Humans are more intelligent. If I stop, I'm not wrong. And people will understand exactly what I'm talking about, right? Same thing here. If I say, there are two main differences between me and my friend. I'm taller and thinner. If I stop, yes, people understand what I mean. If I add, then my friend, then that's just up to me, all right? So it basically just depends on, you know, how you talk and your style, all right? So we have F, but animals, okay, so I'm guessing this is a continuation, but animals are more adapted to their environment than humans. So I guess if this is a continuation, then you really do need to say, uh, to add than animals, okay? So yeah, that was about it, guys. What else do we have? Do we have anything else? No, that's about it. So now let's turn the page. All right, you guys, so here we have exercise A, study these sentences opposite, right? And before we do any of these things, what I want you guys to do is focus here in the skills check. We have using only and also. What the hell are they? Let me open this so you guys can get a better view here. So let's go down here. We have the words only and also are adverbs. You guys remember we talked a little bit about adverbs in the 98 course. So what are adv adverbs? They, they're basically words that tell us something extra about the information in the sentence, right? Let me elaborate a little bit. So here we have the word only. So when someone uses the word only, he's basically thinking about the object or a complement, right, in a small number or amount, or in simply a small group, right? So if I say only, I'm probably talking about something that's a small number or an amount, whether it's money, basically any number you guys can think of, whether it's for humans, money, groceries, anything, right? Or you, things that are small, basically, right? Not enough. But when I use also, it probably means that I think that the object or complement is the same or similar, right? So let's have some examples, and I'm sure you guys will start to pick it up as we go. So if I say he's only five, when I say he's only five, in my mind, I'm probably telling like he's not he's not that old. He's only five, right? Very young. But if I say she is also five, then I'm you know talking about something that's similar. Maybe she's also five, as in the same age as her brother, for example, or as her other sister, right? So here we have she only has one brother, and here what I mean is that only here means not enough the amount is not enough right so normally people have more brothers right so she, when I say she if I say for example she only has ten dollars right what does that mean it means that people have more than ten dollars and that you know it's weird so she only has one brother so small amount not enough but if I say also here if I say he also has one brother, right? It's probably, I'm um, obviously comparing and it's the same or very similar to someone else. So if I say to my friend, 
to talk about someone else, you know, he he also has a hundred dollars. That probably means that you have a hundred dollars, I have a hundred dollars, and he has a hundred dollars as well, similar or same. Okay. So when do we use only and also in sentences so we don't get confused here so the words go after the verb to be right so it goes after is our am okay that's no question I cannot use only and also before the verb to be okay you guys and two we use it before other verbs okay so it's after the verb to be but before other verbs in the sentence if there are any okay let's get that out of the way now let's go here to the exercise so we have underlined the verbs in each sentence okay so either verb or verbs in each sentence this is just totally not related let's just underline the verbs pretty simple stuff so there are only a few bushes in the area obviously the only verb here is verb to be there are some parts of the world only have two seasons we have a verb to have have is the verb the region is cold and it is it is also humid so the region is a verb and it is also humid so two verbs then we have baga has two seasons and nazca also has two seasons and the verbs here are has and has okay now what do we have which adverb is in the first two sentences okay let's check the adverbs there are only a few bushes in the area some parts of the world only have two seasons can you guys guess that's correct it's only that's the adverb in the first two sentences all right what do we also have which adverb is in the third and fourth sentence? Let's have a look. The region is cold and it is also humid. Baga has two seasons and Nazca also has two seasons. Obviously, the adverb here is also. Now, let's have a tick. Tick the correct rule for using the words only and also. Okay, do you guys remember what we said? Do they go before a verb to be and after other verbs? Or do they go after all verbs in the sentence? Or do they go after verb to be and before other verbs? Or do they just simply go before all verbs? What do you guys think? We literally just talked about this. That's correct. They go after the verb to be and before other verbs. Okay, so C. Right, and we just read the skill check. Now let's move on. So here we have we're going to be rewrite, rewriting some sentences with only. So we're going to be using the adverb in the correct place. And I'll remind you guys again, it's you know adverbs or especially only and also go after the verb to be and before other verbs in the sentence. So now let's put that to practice here. So we have jungles are in tropical climates. What? How am I going to change this to add only? I'm going to say jungles, right, are only, that's where I can add only. So jungles are only in tropical climates, okay? Jungles are only in tropical climates. All right, what else do we have? In some regions, it rains in winter. I can say, in some regions, comma, or not comma, I don't need to add a comma, it rained, it, it only, 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 so it only rains, got a little carried away there, it only rains in winter, okay? So in some regions, it only rains in winter. Number three, we have tigers live in Asia. I'll probably say tigers only live in Asia. All right. Number four, there are about 
1,500 tigers in India. I can say there are there are only about 1,500 tigers in India, right? Let me add, you know, full stops. Okay, so there are only about 1,500 tigers in India. What else do we have? We find giant pandas in China. I can say we only find giant pandas in China. Okay? So we only find giant pandas in China. Number six, pandas eat leaves of one plant. I can say pandas only eat oh eat the leaves of one plant. Right you guys? What else do we have? Seven. The temperature is two degrees Celsius today. I'll probably say the temperature is only, and the reason I, I added is first is because it's verb to be, and we always use only and also after verb to be. Okay, you guys? So the temperature is only two. I'm not going to write be able to write Celsius. So let's just write it as two, as only two degrees. I'll probably just write degrees. Oh, degrees Celsius. Here you guys go. <laughs> the temperature is only two degrees Celsius today. Okay. And finally, we have there are a few rivers in Australia. So we can say there are only a few rivers in Australia. Okay, you guys? So, simple stuff. We only add we <laughs> we only added only, okay? And now that we know how we can use it, it should, you know, be a little bit you guys should be a lot more comfortable now adding only two sentences, okay? So, what do we have here? Let's move on. So we have exercise C. Read each sentence, then complete the second sentence with the word also. So now we're going to be adding also. So I can't really add it here, so we're going to have to do it orally, okay? So here we go. Some snakes are dangerous. Some insects are also dangerous. Remember, we're using the same style that we use for only we use the same style for also as well, okay? So, number two, it rains in autumn, right? I can probably say it also rains in winter. I'm not wrong, okay? Number three, we studied animals. We also studied insects. Number four, oh, let me get it, that out of the way. The climate is hot. It is also humid, right? Number five, the animals live in Europe. They also live in China, okay? So they, and then we have also, and after that, right after that, we have the normal verbs or other verbs in the sentence. So always, always use also or only before the main verbs in the sentence. And I'm not talking about verb to be. Number six, it was cloudy yesterday it was also cold okay number seven giraffes have long legs they also have long necks all obviously we have have as a verb so we use also before that number eight the paws of polar bears help them walk on snow they also help them swim Okay, you guys, All right. I hope you're able to understand that and understand the conclusion of how to use only and also in sentences, okay? Now, let's move on. Here we have choosing. So exercise D, look at the information about African elephants and Asian elephants, then circle the correct word or phrase in each sentence. Okay, so 
let me actually open this for you guys so we have there is or are two main kinds of elephant excuse me so there are two main kinds of elephant number two African elephants live or are in tropical climates in Central and or are living South Africa or and living South Africa. I'm not too sure if the book made a mistake here or not. So African elephants live in tropical climates in Central and living South Africa. Okay. Then we have three Asian elephants live also or also live you sh you guys should be able to answer this this one's really simple also live in tropical climates in india and southeast asia okay so asian elephants also live because also always comes before any other verb that's not verb to be okay number four both kinds of elephants are simply gray I don't need to get specific gray color no so both kinds of elephants are gray number five there only are or are, are only about 10,000 African elephants you guys should also be able to do this obviously are only and the reason for that is because verb to be always comes before only and also and 30,000 of Asian elephants or simply just Asian elephants what am I gonna say I don't need to say of here so I'll just add Asian elephants okay then we have number seven African elephants are more heavy or heavier what do you guys think obviously it's not really a tall or a long adjective so heavier I don't say more heavy I just say heavier than Asian elephants they are also more tall or taller you guys that's correct we're gonna say taller right comparative adjectives nine Asian elephants have the smoother skins or just simply smoother no need for the so smoother skins ten their ears their ears are small than small than what <laughs> there's nothing else so smaller simply smaller all right so pretty simple stuff you guys now let's move on what else do we have here okay so this is gonna be pretty interesting and on a, this is kind of an exercise that I want you guys to do on your own I'm gonna tell you what to do maybe give a little bit of examples but you guys should be able to write this one down as a conclusion to this lesson so you're going to write a comparison of two kinds of bears right so here we have in front of us two kinds of bears the polar bear and a brown bear okay and I want you guys to write a comparison how are you gonna do that first I want you to study this table right here and get all the information you need from this table you know write it down make some extra notes if you want your choice right and try and find similarities and differences like here so for example climate you know polar bear lives in a polar environment while the brown bear lives in the continental one you guys remember polar and continental and then you write your text you can also use some patterns from this exercise right here the one that we just said so African elephants live in tropical climates in Central and South Africa you guys can use things of the you know the same pattern right but try to switch it up don't use the same pattern for you know everything that you write down right so this essay is about polar bears and brown bears okay so for example location Russia Canada Greenland Russia Canada the USA one we have two similarities one difference right here we have one difference number also a difference color also a difference you know a lot you'll see a lot of differences and not that many similarities so it's a matter of just balancing it out okay you guys I wish you the best of luck and I'll see you in the next one peace out